taunting in mid, the cannon top side. Then they can flex around who's playing what, yeah. uh, which is going to be a, a really nice thing for them heading into uh, the group stage. Yeah, having that level of strategic depth where your players are able to... Far. Abadage, uh yeah. whiffing on the queue. That's why Ari mains can't afford houses. It's because their their costs are too high. <laughs> They're buying, I don't know, something about <laughs> buying too much coffee. Yeah, I got it. It's a deep cut. Yeah, it's a millennial joke, I feel you. All right, Abadage. Gonna dash out to safety. Has bought more than enough coffee to zoom up and charge out. Perk stepping in. Unstoppable. Ah, yes. <laughs> Kasante. And now Perks is out of mana. When he yeah. loses out here, we'll see how much yeah. Odawane has gone back in return. Abadage. Not very quick on the unstoppable there. Daglas, does he want to burn a flash and commit? The answer is no. If he had level six, that would have been one. I feel called out. You, uh, you also, play Zoe support when we play together, so it's not a... It's better than Yumi. True. We take those. 4v1. Abadage. Can he I navigate think he his these. way out? <laughs> That's a bold bet. No one on the side of Vitality can stand against any long walls or Abadagi will have a free escape path. His upset's just going to get some free poke here. Stun going to come in. Unstoppable. Knock back behind the tower. Abadagi still standing for now. Getting a bit of damage back. Still doing all right. He wins he those! Blood. He kills the cat! Kaiser was tanking tower! <laughs> Kaiser surely didn't even realize he was tanking it, did he? Oh no, and oh, now it comes oh. Peach! Damn. Got your Peaches down in bot lane. Ben, overall, outside of that bot side play, an incredibly quiet game. Excel. Odo has TP now, but I don't think they're going to go for this one. They're dropping Herald. I feel like Peach was really trying to use Sweeper and not Herald, but... I, I'm inclined to agree. Maybe it was timing out? I don't think so. Uh, Daglas has Smite. Are they willing to step forward to contest this? Can they stop the charge? Nope. nope. Berlin predicted, Berlin was Looking for the correct, fight, and now they're just going to try to lock up Milio. Immediately, the all now coming up, and they're forced to retreat backwards. The TP's coming in, Odawamne just going to walk out to safety. It seems like there's no fight to be had, but now he's in trouble. The charm flash forward, coming in from Perks. Odawamne popping out, trying to stay standing. Photon going to go in and finish the kill. Plates for kills now, as Photon keeps going. Locked up, stunned under tower. The needles! Oh, damn! That was wacky. Okay, Photon, just showing up out of nowhere. But there's a Mikhail's. 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 Oh, okay, a little late, but it does come out there. Upset, starting to heal up. Daglas body blocking a little bit here. Has to be careful. The Sejuani is going to alt out to safety. Patrick doesn't want to overcommit with the flash. Ooh, Perks so is up here, though. Escape. Okay, Patrick, no ulti. Does have flash and cleanse available. Peach has flash. Falls as well. I think it will end up going down here. Upset doesn't really Upset have to wait, so they might just die. Old. Over committing here, the knockback there, upset down. Kaiser surely going to fall as well. Daglas coming in, but I don't think he can save the cat. The last auto finishing the job. And even if you don't pick sides, you can always yeah. cheer for Yumi Dunn. He doesn't end up giving that life over. And uh, well, he's up to the Rift Maker now, so he. There, but here's that second arrow that Daglas was able to get uncontested. So we'll be able to break down this mid lane tower with the charge. As XL now trying to kick this off. Oh no, just goes right over the wall. Mikhail's coming out and upset now trying to turn it right back. Cleanse coming in from the Milio as well. Upset firing up. Good damage coming in. Photon fully committing to the fight. Body blocking the ultimate. Perks off to the side. Can he find the Milio? Not yet. Patrick stepping out to safety and instantly it's Abba on the flank. Upset knocks down. Excel taking the fight. Flash forward from Ava again, whipping the Q3, though the dash forward. Peach going back under tower, though the mid lane tower still standing, making this dive pretty tricky. Oh, everyone's so low. What is that? So I want to play this a little bit slower and allow Odo to get on top of the tower. Forcing here might not be the call. Yeah, it's 20 minutes. It's a pretty slow Baron. They're now backing up. The upset has a ton of shockers. Oh, but Dougie goes to the backside anyway. That was a terrible play. You can't just leap into the Aphelios no matter how strong you're feeling. There's absolutely no follow up. Odo coming in. Odo has the flank, but they're just going to tear through Patrick. And I don't know if the cannon's going to be enough. Leap out from Daglas. Daglas now just hit for the reset. This is his time to shine. Looking for the reset on Peach as well. Does he have enough damage? Ticking, ticking away. Yeah, Kaiser wants to get the job done in the end. Excel still make it work. The triple from Odo, the hero. Make a play. Uh, Peach obviously taking Dragon in the meantime. So Vitality. That's always yeah. going to be a threat coming from Excel's side, but. As well for someone like Photon trying to access the back line. Oh, that could be important. Peach looking to snipe, locks up perks, and he's dead. Ooh. Clean pick from the side of Excel. I think Excel can start the banner now. They definitely can. 
One man down. Vitality, are they ready to contest this one? Photon has TP up and available. There is vision in the area. One ward not cleared out. You're just not going to win the fight. You can't even step into, into the river, I don't, I don't think, from Vitality. Best bet is to try and take some, some turret gold on the bot side of the map, because that Baron is already gone. Yeah, easy pick. Conversion into Baron. Gold lead only continuing to get bigger here. 6k now. Photon going to get a little bit of something back here as the rest of Excel now tries to collapse. Oh, he wants to keep pushing. Walking What's into Odo, fight, Odo. Odo has the base gate, though, so this doesn't really feel like a very winning proposition at this stage. The rest of the team now coming in, but Odo taking a ton wow. of damage, going golden Photon. Yeah, just... Uh, just no. trying to get something done, honestly. Yeah. Haven't been overcommitting to any big plays. Have Did take a risk around that Baron, but since then have kind of chilled out. And now with the Baron that they've successfully secured, thanks to a pick on two perks and a oh potential boy. second pick on to perks. Yep. That felt personal. Yes, it did. The dude was in his own base, and they just came flying over the wall Not his out base of anymore. nowhere. Getting evicted. Uh, XL. Probably don't end here, because they've been playing very conservatively, so I assume they're just going to take the safe play. Yeah, going to go to the top side of the map, Apodog ATPing up there with the wave to usher lane. So he was going to threat actually flanking Vitality in their own base. That makes Vitality, you know, forces them to get off the bot lane. Inhibitor Photon's trying to get some gold back. The objective bounties in the top lane, but uh, XL might just take the Nexus during that time. Yep. A little rage splitting. Pull back on upset is good. Just taking their time here, forcing out the Yumi ultimate perks. Barely able to survive. Patrick Death really wants that kill back. Everyone flashing forward. Trying to get something done here. Odawamna has opened up the Nexus. It's up to Excel now. Do they want to end the game or do they want to team fight? The choice is theirs. For now, the choice appears to be fight the oh, team. Oh, 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 oh. Goes Odo. An electric send off for Vitality is Excel lock top four. What hurt more? Venius' arm with the shock thing, or, or that, that Odo, Odo ult coming in, because that looked insane. What their composition does, other than the Renekton, who will help them, you know, get through the early game and just have a strong landing phase as a blind pick. Scale, 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 scale. Team fight, eat the Aphelios, eat the Azir, keep everybody safe. On the upside for Mad Lions, it's like, go for a wombo combo, but if this you can find a kill on Kennen or even burn his flash, the amount of yeah. kill pressure Adam has in this lane goes up through the roof. Shio on the backside, Chasey now trying to E out to safety. That's the point click CC, followed up by more point click CC. Chasey slowed down, flash in. First blood coming through for BDS. Clean gank from Shio. That is some gorgeous Shio gameplay right there. Uh, it's, it's a longer boot. There's a heel. Anyway. Americans sandal. talking about geography. Not going to be good. The knock back there. LeBron coming in from behind. Manages to land one. The slow one to Hillisank. Trying to make it out to safety. Shio again finding presence on the map. Elioia still power farming up. Has a massive CS lead but of what Shio is doing. Chasey did end up using his ultimate, and actually that puts him in a, a little bit of a no tough flash spot. either. Definitely very tricky knock up oh. there. Hillisang! Uh, I mean, Niski is here. Bit of an upsie. LeBrov no level 6. They're trying to run down Crowny. Crowny flash out to safety. Exhaust coming in. Goes on to the Gragas. The knockback for there. They're surely going to take out LeBrov. They don't have any CC, but they don't need it. Karzy getting a kill back. All part of the plan. One for one trade. I do think, you know, Alternator going uh, for, like, the team fight build would make a lot more sense for Mad Lions if they were definitely favored in the team fights. I think that with this, Chasey can get a little bit faster prio on a lane, maybe use that to threaten to collapse in with the yeah. rest of the team, uh, you know, use that ultimate to force a fight around a numbers advantage. Uh, I actually am I'm a bit of a fan. Oh, Scoop back, Shio in the area. Immediate CC follow-up. Niski's going to be able to navigate his way out of this one. Alti coming. Cask knockback with a flash forward from Nuke. Still laying down some damage. Soldiers with a follow up there. Arcane smash coming in. Should just be able to run him down. Adam on the way. Can body slam over the wall, but there's a crocodile waiting for him. Immediate stun. Follow up. Adam gonna grab the kill on the bottom side. Mad Lion's gonna aggressive onto LeBron. Crowny though. Perfect guns for a fight. Oh, yeah, has to be careful about overextending here. Still just walking into the tower. Repeatedly getting autoed and getting taken out. Stacking chakrams like it's nobody business. BDS. Getting work done across the map. So it's yeah, not mean, really an option for them. El is looking mid with the ulti. Hillisang ready to keep this one going. The pullback is there. The Rakan now looking to come in. The pushback coming through. The lockup there. They knock him back with the wall. Nuke still standing. El Yoyo going and he can't get anything done. Mad Lions. They're throwing punch after punch at BDS. They're the ones to be able to just free take this Drake, which isn't that hard when you're first on the objective and you have a Maokai to put those down. Hey, look at that. He dashes away, flash and one shot the cannon. Who could have seen it coming? 
Wait, you saw it coming. Yes. Hold on. Chasey <laughs> should not have stepped that far up. That was a tricky yeah, position. A... And that means plates. I mean, there's 45 seconds left on plates. Adam's going to be able to take those. Matt's okay. still looking. Caught out. The knock of the fall up. Hill's now looking to come in. But no, still gets out. That was so close. Mad Lion. Push off in the cannon lane. Yeah. And the vision has not been completely cleared out yet. <laughs> As I say that, the ward fades away. So, oh, they are TPing in. TP coming through. Was Adam. it worth it? Gets the tower, is going to give his life, is going to try to take Chasey out with him. But luckily, Elioia is there to find the shutdown. Now the aggressive play on the mid lane. White gun perfect for shredding through these towers. That's the charge. Berlin comes alive for Shelly. Trade that for full control over the top side of the jungle. And overall, Mad Lions. A solid angle for a play. BDS dash through the blue buff and back over the wall. So that's one flank mitigated. The vision stopping Chasey from getting too aggressive on his Chasey flank. Chasey spotted. Chasey spotted, but they're still grouped up. Flash available for Chasey as well. Dragon 7k health. It is going to reset. Chasey still waiting on that angle. Adam stepping forward, going in under the Niski. Chasey needs to find a way into the back line. BDS playing this nice and slow. Nuke and Crowny untouched for now, but they're not getting a lot of damage on. Knock back from Niski. Ball from Elioia does not connect. Crowny not going to connect on the all Clutch Flash there to make sure it could not find a target. 4k. Dragon getting lower. It's a tense exchange, but neither side able to find an angle into the fight. BDS will walk away with the third Drake of the game. BDS just a wall right there. Mad Lions couldn't get through him. Chasey tried to jump into the pit, but he he just can't accomplish anything. His ultimate hit one player, I think. Those solo lanes, and yeah, BDS are going to start hitting. They have the TP from Adam to get back into the fight in mid and double, double teleports TP. from Mad. They're going to try to collapse on the TP in mid lane and just burn Adam out of the fight, but Adam dashes away quickly. Not forced to use flash in that Mad still have no ults. Pinned into the pit. Niski, nine seconds on the ultimate. Maybe he can get something done here. El Yoya can't get into the pit. 3K. It was a rough early game, but it still can turn the whole bursting. game around. And burst is going to work. El Yoya locked up. Big damage coming through. Jungler down. Baron secured for BDS. Mad Lions once again left empty handed in the exchange. Karzi looking to poke. Adam stepping forward, locking up Chasey. Now the roots coming through, looking to follow up. Chasey forced to sidestep and gets knocked down in return. Hillisang leaping out of safety as Karzi gets the arcades up in time. Oh, new and now the pushback coming through. BDS is absolutely stomping. Mad Lions. BDS just tearing Matt apart. Really composed around the objectives. Adam's still looking for a little bit. Cancels the reset from Hilly. And now Hilly is absolutely Hilly flashing from Shia. The knock back. Karzi trying to get up safe. Nuke's everywhere. Nuke on the side. The ulti won't even finish. Nuke now on a rampage. <laughs> Nuke just kept trying to run top lane to farm minions. And then enemy champions ran into him with 200 health. 26 minutes. I think this is game. I mean, even if it doesn't end on this push, it is over. That's two inhibs at minimum. Niski's gonna come back up with the ultimate. Elioia Chasey have theirs as well, so I don't think the end is here, but it is only a matter of time, that's for sure. One inhibitor down, a second inhibitor to follow. The only thing they need to worry about are these ultimate cooldowns on the side of Mad Lions. BDS you saw this fight, so you kind of know what happens. This one you haven't seen. Oh no. Chasey running. Adam has a hole breaker, doesn't even need it. He just eats him. This of, is uh, wiggle room. I think when it came to the uh, the actual execution of it. Yeah. And you got to give credit to BDS in the draft too, I think, for just seeing exactly what was coming in. They got all the three powers picks immediately coming on through, and now they can just run into Mad Lion's face. Adam, Rue, Death, following up, big damage, pushback, Karzi, buffers out of that one, Crowny killing everyone, BDS victory lap here. Mad Lions, uh, shepherded back into their own base, put into the pen, they're in the zoo, and BDS are most certainly the zoo keepers here as Mad Lions out of room to maneuver. There's no Savannah left. BDS locking themselves into the top eight, taking their time, enjoying the moment, savoring it after a difficult best of one stage. They will secure top eight with an insane win over the Mad Lions. And Nuke, you can see there, sigh of relief. Position locked, no tiebreakers, no nonsense. You're in. Does that make BDS the hyenas? No, they're the, zoo, they're the, zoo, the, the zoo zookeepers. Keepers. I was going with. This would certainly be a uh, throwback classic of Finns uh, that I do think can do decently well into the Renekton, but yeah, it's just going to be the Cassante coming on through here for that one. We'll so not know until SK play later. For now, all you can do is keep your eyes on this matchup and know that the winner will lock groups. Dragging over to the side of Astral. All right, recall animation coming out. That'll keep the clone standing. 
Up now, just oh. kind of sliding and gliding here. Zastrala is going to come at four members to try to secure this first Herald. Maorang in the area, a lot of potential burst damage with Shigenda coming down. If they can just elite one member, the fight will go in their favor. But the threat of a reset for 113 is big. They're going to try to tear through this Renekton. Are they going to be able to fight? Larson is there, knocked out of the fight. Larson huge with that first blood. So far, a one for one. 113 taking away the Renekton. The CC up and available. Comp is almost here too. He's been sprinting out of the base board. Dash through, unstoppable. The Vi coming into the back line, looking to take leader out, but leader is still standing. One one three. The blinking health bar cannot find another reset. Comp doing so much damage. Kami Someone hit him. Chakram. Can they finish the job? There's Malray coming through. Might not need to do the first strike, but he got the last one for sure. Comp on cleanup duty as Koi take over. Koi just tore Astralis apart. They opted into the four on five. Comp was fully sure. in. Okay, Checkmate. my bad. My you got bad. That call back. Mr. Rules Lawyer. Yeah, I, lo I love a good callback. I also love a good team fight. That's what we got on our screen right now. It's not a team fight yet. Four it's about to be. This could be one of those Vettius flips he was talking about. Koi are really looking for it. Both sides contesting the area. I think this is the second one. The first one definitely also flip. Okay, second one. Coming through, 2.5k, getting lower. Koi clearly want the fight. Gonna try to burn through John Hoon here at the start. 1-1-3 one, one, off to the side. Stun not even connect. Leader uncontested, but he doesn't do any damage. Koi, get a free pick. 1-1-3 um, one, one, trying to walk in to steal that one away, but the knock up now unstoppable as he tries to retreat. Finn being sacrificed here in the exchange. Just confusion in the astrology. And Jigenda, total control over the top side. Leader's gonna have a hard time approaching this tower as Larson's doing fine to match Finn on the bottom side of the map. Uh-oh. Alti now coming in. Finn unstoppable. He just brings the Nico all back with him. Larson on a team fight. They're going to lose one, maybe two turrets in mid lane while it's going down. Larson TPing down. Can pitch for the flank. Has <laughs> the proto belt. Is a minion. Larson looking to secure groups as a melee minion. Oh. Oh. From Larson on the flank. Knocked back. Astralis' hopes torn to pieces with a single press of his R button. Koi dominating, and again, their Astralis are just running out of time. Oh no! Comp comes lives. flying in on the Giga Cone, takes the kill, and what a way to achieve a thousand kills in the LEC from Larson. That Nico Wolf was dirty, catches four players. The early game from the Trachea Mall wrong, the camp's being stolen. He's gonna get started out of his jungle, and his top lane's getting dope. Leader pushback is not gonna do anything against an unstoppable Vi. Maorang now on a killing spree. Bringing in that first strike money like nobody's business. But I mean, quite diligent. Oh, for sure. For Laying sure. down vision line on the bottom side before you set up the objective, taking the objective. Uh, it's clean, it's super controlled from Koi. <laughs> uh, uh, no. 1 1 3 has to be careful. Oh, Malrung and Shigender are going to team Astralis. up for a double flank. Knocking the jungler down, at least looking to try to take him out. John Hoon finding the hook onto Shigenda, not a priority target, but starting now, leader uncontested doing damage. TP flank now coming in, could be big. 1 1 3 ulting out to safety, a lot of damage down on the Koi. Finn trying to be the difference maker. Kame untouched. Red, white, looking to make the fight happen. 1 1 3 finding the reset. Koi, they were in control for so long, but they overcommit and they lose one. Koi mid game strikes again. 24 minutes on the clock, and they're front of 4v5 there. 10k gold lead is now getting a little bit smaller. Uh, the minions coming back in the flank. Spot it now. Jong Hoon knocked up. That's going to be the root over the wall. 1 1 3 on the retreat. That's support down. Quick pick for Koi. Is it enough for them to start the Baron? That's the right idea from Koi, though. Now with the numbers advantage, much harder for Astralis to re-clear vision. Finn taking some chunk down, too. Any damage you get down onto the Astralis front line is meaningful. Still, opportunity to flip. Coming in from the red side, 1 on 3 can jump over that wall for the smite steal, but it's going to be hard to maintain vision inside the pit. Force flip the game. Will they go for it, Astralis? So difficult to find this angle. You can see in the darkness. Soldiers down, vision lost. Larson over the wall again! Finding a massive angle, but this time leader disengages, but no comp leaps into the back line. He takes out Kavi, he takes out both carries on the side of Astralis. Koi set to take the Baron. They'll finish off the remaining members of the enemy team as 1-1-3 desperately tries to take Larson back. He gets the reset, coming over the wall now. Can he make it to safety? He cannot. jong Hoon coming in. He's got no spellbook, so there's no way he can take a smite. There's no way he can find a steal here. Objective will drop in the favor of Koi. Beautiful flank coming in from Larson. They don't want to risk anything. They take their time, they wait for the kill, they finish the job, they get the Baron. 4K damage on the Nico. And both carries on the side of Koi deleted so incredibly quickly that they, they did less than 500 apiece. They're looking at some damage, but now trying to force the play again. Maorang locked up, Chain CC coming through, Kabe over the wall. But now here comes Comp on the hunt, most certainly. Finding two, finding three. He's going! He's still chasing. He 
wants a few more. Finn trying to turn it back, but the wild growth is there. The Azir Tower! Puff going golden. Finn desperate to get anything back, but now Kabe needs to run for the hills. Here comes Larson. Here comes Koi. Determined to secure their spot in groups as they push aside Astralis. You can't forget about Comp Sivir, who's looking for a fifth pentakill all time on that one. But Koi will destroy Astralis. The Nico coming in clutch, that's gonna finish off the game as Comp goes legendary. And Koi do advance the group stage. Another double for Comp. You said it. Koi advancing to the group stage. Astralis will have to hope that SK cannot find a win and pray for a tiebreaker later in the day. Koi, number seven to lock the group stage. And I gotta say, we heard from the desk. First time seeing it this summer, he had four caps in terms of all time. 22 games is down the list, 10th, 11th most played. I really love the options, as you mentioned, in terms of that smart path thing from Yike, though. Clears top, does blue, it means he's here for the, the play. And it's not to actually, well, I was going to say not go for the dive, but maybe they do. Exhaust and heal available for Mercer. Use that exhaust already. Flacket holding on to the flash. Mickey's running for his life. The turret shot does not secure the kill. I think that exhaust did us there, just showing up in the middle lane. Yike. We'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Yankos in just a moment. He's sitting on that chicken camp. Caps low on mana, low on health, and Yike will get rooted up, gets knocked backwards, and Vitio is looking for the W. The Void Missile does not connect. Flash over the wall from Yike. Here comes Yankos and Flacket. First blood is available and secured by Team Heretic. G2 are just playing this too greedy. They try to go for the play on bot, which doesn't work out. So immediately, Yike, he's already behind on the, the CS. You can see they're level three to level four because Yankos ends up being able to clear his top side, gets Goodle, and then move in to steal away that camp as well. You've even got control for video mid now. Caps. Ooh, flashes towards the tower. Connects and Caps is able to deliver. Deliver Yankos to that Zavassi meets in the river. So, potential fight on the horizon here, Dagda. Yeah, Yike wins this, though. So, Yankos needs some help real Ooh. quick. Caps is also trading effectively. Level six is available for VTO. Jumping onto Yike. Here comes Flacken from downtown. Second kill secured for the Zeri. Caps is holding on to the petrifying gaze. Needs to stun up multiple targets. Hunt Summit does not have that moonlight vigil. VTO is going forward there, looking for the damage onto Hunt Summit. Caps will pick up the kill onto Yankos in the mid lane, but it's here. Heretics running for their lives. Miasma will not find a target, and Heretics should just about. And be even able though you've got Yankos on this bottom side, Flacket, he's just under so much threat. Hansama and Mickey have been playing this way so or this lane incredibly well. And honestly, I think this is more than a bait than anything. Ooh, a little bit of an engage. Yankos going forward. Flacket is low. Hansama is abandoned. And the kill is secured. Didn't have the full kit available. Really no. gonna be enough damage if Yike and Caps are there, especially with how strong. Caps is the moment, so I think you need to find some way to get onto Caps and catch him out before he can get himself up and rolling. So flank angles is something we're going to keep an eye on. Another 1v1. Ultimates have been thrown down. Ebby needs to get that cute on cooldown. Heals for now. Flashes away and Broken Blade wins it. He manages to pick up that kill. Okay, gold lead and bot lane with all those resources invested. I mean, yeah, it's a 300 gold lead, but it's nothing really to write home about. And this was a talk about look for caps, but can they do it? We're gonna find out. Flash available for caps as well as the ultimate. Yike is in the fray, gets jumped on. Vito and Yankos now stepping out. They do not have the damage to take him down. Subjugate really, really keeping Yike healthy and alive. Vito running a risk, they're stepping forward, manages to find the kill, turns away from the petrifying gaze, and Yankos is able to flash out too. That was a very cheeky play on the exit. Flacken will step forward now, firing with that burst. Caps is rooted in place by the lost chapter, and with the help of Flacken, will finally take down another. Team Heretics find their kills and punish G2. Huge play from Heretics. We're talking about, look, they need to try and overload mid lane to catch out Caps before he can make any sort of dragon play, and they do it just perfectly. They manage to catch out Yike as he's going because Caps is in his position, but Mickey, where are you off to? Ooh, does manage to find Hans Sama as well as Broken Blade. Dragon is picked up, and Team Heretic's happy with that one. Push back under the tower, Yankos making his way up top. But again, you just, you can feel the sort of control throughout the course of the lanes here for G2. Zebi has started this fight, knowing Yankos is relatively close by. No ultimate for that Maokai, however, and that's a kill already secured for Broken Blade. Instantly traded back by Yankos. Yankos is playing this game so well that someone has to try and compensate on the top lane. All right, Hansama, green, white, teleport coming in behind. Four caps, Dragon is going down, reset, Nature's Grasp, tanks up multiple members of G2. Ebi cannot find the angle for now. 
He's got that flash available. Dragon 3000, 2000 being burst down. I think G2 may just about secure that one. And the fight has not yet broken out. No ultimate there for Yankos. Means it's going to be very difficult to lock someone down. Need that Yumi. Now they're backing away. I think they want to concede that dragon. Not worth fighting. Not worth getting jumped on. Do they fancy? How long do they stick on this Baron is the question. Yeah, they're just going to try and threaten it, but they do it incredibly quickly, and I don't think Vlacken's going to be here in time. Might not be able to. Envy's going forward. Nature's Grasp is thrown out. Vito's still got that ultimate. The Killer Instinct inside the pit. Baron secured by G2. Vito, Yo and Envy are running for their lives. They've been engaged on. Broken Blink trying to zone away the mid lane, and Flacken finally joins the fight. Throws out that W, and Vito still holding on to that Killer Instinct, holding on to that backline dive. Can he pull the trigger? Will he pull the trigger? Does so in just a moment. Now starting to step back and stand up, lock down. Vito is focused and destroyed by G2. Flack had finally backed up by Mercer with that chapter, but it's too little. It's just a little late. And it's a one for two, and the Baron goes the way of a G2. Chase is on, though, and Hans Summer was tagged by that prowling projectile. It is so hard for Heretics to team fight. I like the idea from Vito. It's, hey, I'm going to ult Dean, try and bait out Kawa while Vito's trying to apply pressure top. This is a five-man push. Evi still in that mid lane, has got the teleport available, holding on to it for now. Inhibitor secured and Team Heretics, they're just being run down. G2, do they go for the win? I mean, they go, got, got time here. They get an exit turn at least. Now Heretics trying everything to keep them off. Nature's Grasp will hold G2 in place. The book is being read by the cat, and Evi forced away by Broken Blade. Yankos can't do a lot more as Flacken and Vito finally join the fight. Third item pushing in towards Team Heretic's base. As Heretics are looking for an opportunity to step into the fight. But it's a bluff. You've no yep. ult for Yankos. Nope. It's all on Mercer. And who's going to step forward with the cat line? Well, where does Vito go? Vito and Mercer. Ebi can get over the wall the with the blast cone. Teleport into the base. Caps is pushing, trying to take down that last Nexus turret. Now the reply is the recall will complete from Vito. He's got that static shift to wave clear. Three members of Heretic jumping onto four of G2. The lost chapter roots up just a few for now. And that's a shutdown. Yankos managing to pick the kill up onto Hans Summer. But under the tower, Caps gets the kill. Now there's no one defending that last stand. And all of a sudden we have a brief, what? brief. Oh, the pause happened at 32 minutes 35 seconds as caps was on the nexus turret of team heretics after killing vito league officials are currently working on chrono breaking the game back to 32 15. now those numbers don't mean anything what i want you to know is caps has completed the teleport vito is about to finish his recall and ebby's engage from over the wall has not yet happened and that summoner's rift is brought back up onto your screens ebby is able to get over the wall with the blast code down in the bottom of your screen caps is pushing forward onto vto the time holding on to that petrifying gaze in the river flacket is pushed back by hans summer the flacket does stay alive vto this time round shuts down caps he picks up the kill in the 1v1 but the baron is being threatened by g2 video has already used has no tp though he can't get back into it so at this stage it's a baron for g2 and that's going to be it Okay, Baron secured by G2, base defended. For them to actually try and win it out, and Video here, I, like not able to get out of this as Video, sorry, Caps ends up tracing forward, but Video managing to flash onto the fountain, manages to heal back up, and then as the ult with that shield to follow through there once more. So, Heritage. It's up onto Mercer, who's flashless, and he's taken out, unable to get back to Flacket, sacrificing himself. We are obviously back on the old HUD as the Chrono Break does, but does have problems with our new one. And now in a four versus five and Baron empowered minions. Yankos goes over the wall. He's level 14, pushed back by Broken Blade. And Ebi is being cut down by Red, White, Hans, Summer. Flacket uses that ultimate and unable to do much more. Vito has got the Killer Instinct available, but is not pulling the trigger just yet. Waiting to see if Hans goes low, stepping forward. And that's it. It's done. Not enough damage from Vito, the last man standing. And G2 will ace Team Heretics, win the fight, and turn their attention to the Nexus. It took a while to get here, but G2 have done it. They win the fight, they get the Baron, and Mercy. It's an honest effort, but that'll be all she wrote for Team Heritage. The final kill of the game onto Yumi seems poetic. G2 Esports secure first in the summer regular season. A well-earned win at that as well.
I love the way they played the macro in this one. I mean, yes, it was slow. Yes, the goal was in touching distance, but you could see for from 10 over in the LPL, so not entirely unusual. We got to see it a little bit in MSI as well. Something that can work very, very well, and I think gives you a lot of engagement. for Humanoid bringing out the Zerith. That's something that's definitely out of left field. Okay, so <laughs> fun combo to watch for, but for now, is going to be Razork on a invading mission. But he has been spotted out. Flash over the wall from Markun. Irrelevant will connect to the Counter-Strike and First Blood is donated to Irrelevant. Just good awareness and punishing Razork. Just Fnatic both in mid and top. And we'll have to see now if they can try and trans uh, move that on to some other advantages, but Noah here. Exekick has no idea. Oh, Exekick gets exhausted, has ghosted already. Moving behind those flame chompers, staying alive for the time being. Flash is available, needs to get over the wall. Damage onto Noah. He's down to 300 and kills secured. Fnatic with the gank from Razork, finding the kill. are aware of. And uh, Markun was waiting towards the Krugs, deciding to instead peel back towards Certus. Razork is the target. Certus has got the Emperor's Divide and may be able to use it. Oscarin is pushed backwards and Razork gets locked up and shut down. Right of the Arcane does not enough damage. Oscar's able to at least slide his way to safety and another kill for their squads. And this time around, Makun once again stepping forward. He's got himself the Depth Charge. And Oscar, five seconds from Dominus. Flashes up, three seconds from Dominus. He's going to be taken down before it's even available. Another kill. Immediately resets, ignores his top camps. He's going to make sure he can cover the dive that could potentially come through into boss. Look at the mini-map. Mini 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 map. Look at the mini-map. Humanoids coming in with Razork. Ultimate is available. Your Kono Pulse fired out. Exekick and Doss are going to get slaughtered. Then there's Markun arriving to try turn something back. Doss is the next target as Noah flashes for his life. Two kills secured by Fnatic at the cost of Trimby's life. In the bot lane. Look at the mini-map again. Razork is nearby. Herald has been dropped. Two plates secured. The third about to fall. Dredge line finds its target. Super Mega Death Rocket fight fairly early as the chapter is being read. Right of the Arcane fires two and three. Extra kick is low. The Shockrams are bouncing off Doss and the Hula Hoops find another for Noah. Makun's able to run with his escape with his life. Sure that he can actually have that impact on bot lane despite the fact he's staying there. TP into bot lane though. Keep in mind, the initiation was started by SK, as is this next one. Flash forward, finds the counter strike. Noah is flashless, but he's able to run to safety. So it just muses the conquering and the shifting sands. But he doesn't have the time to lock down Razork. Teleport commit. Attacking to get damage down, and then flash forward from Noah. He knows he's got the speed up, he's got everything else now relevant. He's getting TP'd on. He managed to take the tower, but at the cost of him. Is alive. Another kill to Noah. Five and O. Oh. All of Fnatic's kills secured by the Aphelios in the bottom lane. And Rezork is looking to run down Doss. Zap will apply the slow flame choppers by some time, but Doss is knocked backwards. And Noah gets another. This man cannot be stopped. <laughs> oh the God. is rooting, likes a kick, and he's forced to flash for his life. Managing to secure that one. Super oh. Mega Death Rocket gets one back. Five kills to dodge? seven, and it is dead even. The okay, the right are grouped up. The Fnatic are even going to get what they really want to as well. Like, Bot Terror is still standing, but Noah gets the play in mid. You're going to get position now for the Dragon as well. It's in 30 seconds, and they're actually going to rotate top. They're reading SK going for this play with Irrelevant, and now they're going to be completely caught out. This is a two versus five coming up. Oscar in and is hurriedly being targeted. Zerath doesn't find the kill, but the Nature's Grasp is thrown out and just about tags Irrelevant. He's taken down by Razork, and Fnatic will look to secure another tower. They're second of the game. SK are trying to trade in the mid lane. Every time one team commits to a play, there is a response at least being attempted. It's actually very funny, guys. Uh, oh, Certus. Certus is going to use that Emperor's Divide by some time, flashes away to safety. And the tier two, you don't get it as SK. And a lot of this is coming down to Fnatic going back to old tricks, but now it's being used against them. SK are overloading topside. Noah's got his flash, and he's going to find get stunned, get stunned up rather by that Jax, continuing to run, flashes at the last. Second stays alive long enough no! for the teleport to come Trimby. in. Are you kidding me? The Jinx cell doesn't have enough, and now Makun is the target. It won't be able to numbers let. on the top here for SK, at least starting to. Three members moving towards Irrelevant, who now finds himself in ganked by Razork and Trimby. That's a flash forward there from Oscar. Throws down the W and some damage back, but eventually Irrelevant should be run down. 
Let's see, what is the reply here from SK? Another kill secured for Razork. They managed to catch out Noah alone inside the jungle, not expecting SK to be there. So they get the kill, they get the shutdown, they also get the tower. That's a big win for, for Fnatic. So if Irrelevant's able to play this out right, and SK can use that Jax effectively, it can make things difficult. But for the moment, it's Fnatic who have control, and that's where they're TPing behind them. Teleport coming in, Exit Kick is very, very low. Dredgeline finds his target, and the first is Rosork. Shut down by Exit Kick. Irrelevant now somewhat flanked right to the arcade, finds the snipe, and the next target will be DOS. Irrelevant is being threatened by the engager. Certus takes the final shot to the face. And Fnatic are able to get one back. It's a trade though, and all of a sudden the Tundisk is dropped. Irrelevant goes forward, looking for the stun. There's not a lot of follow-up though. Everyone else is low, Exit Kick is dead, and Fnatic maintain control of the lane. Just the amount of long-range damage that's coming out of Humanoid is ob not the opportunity for SK. But to start Baron or go for Jax, they're gonna go for the Baron instead. I mean, SK have got a tower lead for now, five to four. They've got all members inside the pit. Oscar is nearby. Ultimate being dropped down by Humanoid. It's doing a lot of work. Baron down to 1,500, 1,000 secured by SK, but they need to get out. How many members can? Immediately, that's irrelevant. Down. Raccoon's trying to escape with those blast cones. Exit Kick looking for that empowered recall. It should just about finish, and it does. Now, can another one get out? Waiting for a few more seconds. <laughs> and that's four members of SK. Right to River and see if they can get that poke. It's a huge amount about getting vision in safe spaces, which is why they're trying to enter through River because they have these TPs in behind them. But that might be the call now to turn onto the TP. Two teleports being channeled from SK. Certus has found Oscar. Emperor's Divide does naught. Irrelevance is jumped on by Marcoon and all of a sudden Oscar's drop low. Exekick gets excited, gets the kill, but gets chunked down. Waiting a few more seconds for Humanoid to charge up that Q irrelevant and DOS drops so low. Certus needs to use the slide and glide to safety. Noah uses the Gale Force forward, backed up by Yumi, but has it got the damage? SK have dropped the highest damage dealer of Fnatic. They've tagged up Trimmy, they've dropped up Razork as well. And now it's just Humanoid left standing in front of his inhibitor turret. They chased too far and did not find the kills. Still though the shots are coming through. Well, another snipe comes out. Humanoid not going to be able to take out Irrelevant, but at least something in return. Four for two. And Dragon for SK as well. Was able to just sidestep, and now in the situation with Baron alive, it is all of a sudden Fnatic inside the pit. Humanoid, no ult available, no flash, and SK are grouped up, four members strong on the top. Certus coming from down south. Yumi ult is flying across multiple members, but it's the first kill secured to resort. Baron's down to 1800, available, a double kill for Irrelevant. The Empress Divide sends Fnatic to the fountain. A clean ace and the Baron for SK. Fnatic to the fountain, but it might have just sent SK to groups. SK with a fantastic team fight are barreling down mid with the Baron and there's no one on Fnatic to defend. With nearly no hope left, the last two games of the regular season, SK take their destiny into their own hands. They dominate Mad Lions on Sunday and they silence Europe on Monday. SK advance to groups. SK with the hero performance over the weekend will get